Hello, my name is Carolyn Benninghoff. I'm a retired biology and environmental science teacher. I served on the IAS board from 2008 to 2016, and for several years, I facilitated the Society's Certified Bird and Butterfly Sanctuary Program. I'm going to read an endearing story about a chickadee. The story is taken from the 1926 spring-summer issue of the Illinois Audubon Bulletin. The author is Genevieve Zimmer, who was a school teacher at Grant School in Moline, Illinois. The article is entitled, A True Bird Tale. To have a real life chickadee come and live in the schoolroom with me and my children was the delightful experience I had one whole day in October. Donald had found him that morning, asleep as he said at the foot of a tree. I just picked him up, cuddled him warm in my hand, and brought him to you. I looked the bird over, but could find nothing the matter with him. So I perched him on a little jar of twigs on my desk. He stretched himself a bit, looked inquiringly around, then murmured a happy little song to himself. Suddenly, he flew over to where the children and I were sitting on the little green chairs at a reading lesson perched on my shoulder, and dee deed with all his might, and then fluttered from book to book. The children fairly held their breath for fear of frightening him. Phyllis offered him a cookie, which he pecked at daintily. Flo remembered the chickadee fair on the lunch counter at the window and fed him bits of suet and nut meats. We talked about him and sang about him and wrote about him. We carried him down to a music appreciation class where he outdid the Victrola. He liked best sitting on the finger of my left hand and being fed dainty morsels of hard boiled egg that I had brought in my lunch. Through the whole hour, he stayed with me. He neither perched on my shoulder or on the back of my chair. He posed with me several times as if having his picture taken was an everyday affair. In the afternoon, while the little folks were busy cutting, our dear little friend flew among them, sometimes alighting on the arm or knee, and even perching on Mary Jane's pencil while she carried him off to show the children in the next room. Dick had a big red apple in his desk, which seemed to attract him. With lifted head but shaky feet, he whistled sweetly for us. How we laughed over him, loved him, and wished that he would stay forever. But as night drew and we opened wide our door, he flew strong once again into the blue. Goodbye, goodbye, little bird. Come back again, the children called. We can never forget you. And the memory of that visit is still sweet, the happiest and fullest day of our lives. Happy anniversary, Illinois Audubon Society. 